Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. And today we're taking a look at a part that was requested by one of the viewers. And this is a burner valve, or a stem valve. You see these commonly in gas cooking appliances, and they get used to control gas flow to different types of burners. This particular valve looks like it was installed into the manifold or the supply rail, but it was never actually tightened down on the connection to the burner. So there may have been an issue with it having the, the stem here cut in the wrong place or the wrong length so that when it was in the equipment the knobs didn't fit correctly and that's why it was never hooked all the way up. As far as the valve itself, this particular valve, you can see it does have a pressure rating, one half PSI for a max pressure and then they've also got that converted over for European markets and kilopascals. But the, the valve itself is pretty simple. But that doesn't mean that there's not things to talk about here. So before we take the valve apart, let's talk about how it's connected. There's two threaded fittings here. Now this threaded fitting, the one that has been used, this is a pipe thread, NPT fitting. It's got a taper to it. And, and it's hard to see, but if you look very carefully, you can just make it out. This thread seals by being tightened into uh, another female pipe thread. The interface of those two threaded portions coming together creates a, a tight seal with just a very small leak path. And that's why we use the pipe dope here to seal that spiral leak around the threads. The other side is a compression fitting. And a compression fitting has several parts to it. So you can see we've got a, a fine straight thread here with a, a compression nut. But then we've also got this little ring. And this ring is called a ferrule. And what the ferrule does is actually physically deform when it's tightened down. So if we look in the opening here, there's a, a small tapered lip, and that ferrule has tapers cut onto it so that it sits with its taper matching up to the taper on the valve. When the nut is tightened down with the ferrule inside, the ferrule crushes. So here's an example of a used ferrule. And you can see that it, it has actually crushed, it squeezed the, the pipe that it was attached to. So when this was installed, it physically crushes this ring. And because we're relying on that physical crush, it's very important that when you're putting these fittings together, all the compression side is clean. It's all properly set in the valve. If this were set too far out, if we had it out here when we compress the ring, the ring would crush the end of the tubing instead of crushing down over the tubing. So you have to be careful with compression fittings. So that said, let's go ahead and take the valve apart. So you can see there's several pieces here, right at the inlet of the valve. We've got this piece, the stem, and there's a little indexing disc here. That indexing disc hits the notches in this cover plate to control how far this stem can be turned. And that prevents us from turning this all the way around. The other piece, the other piece down inside the valve here is what actually controls the gas flow. And this tapered portion is what's actually controlling gas flow. And you can see it's got a grease on it to keep it lubricated. And it sits down inside, and the spring pushing down on it 
keeps this taper pushed together. So when the spring is installed, the spring force is what holds the, the seat down in, holds this down in the seat. The most common failure you see with these is they get hard to turn. And what's happening there is actually this grease breaking down or drying up or getting hard inside the valve and making it hard to turn. You can also see these begin to leak once that grease has gotten hard or worn out. And it's really the same issue. The grease provides both a lubricant and a seal inside these valves. So if that lubricant has failed, you have to take the valve apart like we've just done, clean this all up, and you can clean it with a, a real basic solvent like a WD-40, and then put it back together with stem grease, with high heat stem grease. And the valve can be saved that way. So let's take a look at the actual gas pathway through this valve, just so you can see it here. Take that spring out. So the inlet, where the NPT thread is, you can see that hole in the internal barrel part of the valve. The further we turn it, the more of that hole is exposed to the inlet, and then it's drilled all the way through. So the further we open that on the inlet side, the more gas is able to flow out the outlet side. Let's pop that back apart again. You can see that opening. So there's that same opening drilled through the side. And all we're doing when we turn the valve is exposing that further in the inlet. We're giving more area of that hole to the inlet for gas to flow through. So the valve itself is really simple, and it's pretty easy to maintain as long as you have the right grease and the right solvents to clean with. If you are taking these apart for service, you have to be very careful that they go back together correctly. It's very easy to index this front plate incorrectly or have the stem turned incorrectly so that once the valve goes back together, the knob is in the wrong position or we're in the wrong part of the travel and the knob is able to turn too far. But overall it's a very simple valve, it's very reliable, and it doesn't have very many failures besides that grease drying out. So that's it, a pretty straightforward, pretty simple teardown. Thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.